Hi everyone! Do you feel like starting studies or doing a research in organic chemistry but can't take the workflow into your hands? In this video I'm going to go through some tips that may come in handy to organize your work and practice in a lab. Make it easier, safer and more productive. Remember first time you saw the lab? Lots of glassware, equipment, reagents and what should you do with all of that? Okay, breathe. Lab is almost your kitchen. To cook well, you need to practice, have dishes, have an idea how to switch on an oven, know where everything needs to be kept, and finally read and modify the recipe according to your preferences. Chemistry laboratory is a bit more complicated. Usually there are two types of labs, for student practice and for the research. While labs for students are equipped only with reagents and stuff that is necessary for practice in terms of studies, research labs are usually specialized at a particular topic in chemistry. This is the reason why in research labs you can come across complicated and expensive stuff, as well as get to know methods which are appropriate for specific research and not included into student practice. Ok, but first what can you find in chemistry labs? Let's take a look. Of course a broad assortment of flasks, tubes and other glassware. A large number of glassware is called after their inventors, like Kipps apparatus, Buchner funnel and Petri dish. Glassware, apparatuses, reagents and supplementary stuff must be kept in a lot of place. I also advise you to keep the synthesized substances in order and sort them so as not to lose them or confuse them for one or another. If you have your personal stuff like your own pH meter or low temperature thermometer, sign it in case someone takes it unknowingly or breaks it accidentally. Not a pleasant surprise when you find it out before the procedure, isn't it? Apart from it you can see different heating and steering devices, as well as more common apparatus for different purposes. For example precise analytical scales, centrifuge for separating solid from liquid, rotary evaporator to get rid of solvents, but what about those expensive devices I mentioned? Their construction and exploitation is much more complicated. Yeah, this variety seems to be endless. Of course you won't have to learn everything at once, it will come with the experience. But there are some things which you should keep in mind before starting your way of the samurai in the chemistry lab. To cut a long story short, it is CPC. Caution, preparation, control. Caution is always first. Before embarking on procedure, read the precautions about working with reagents. Some of them may have a disgusting smell, be flammable, explosive and toxic. In such cases the procedure requires special working conditions. On top of that, always remember that the main thing is safety. Safety precautions are strict and compulsory rules. If something happens with you, who else is able to manage with your research? Yes, I know, safety arrangements are a boring list, but it is what once will save your health and life. The second thing is preparation. Before starting the experiment, make sure you prepared all the glassware and reagents. As soon as you start the procedure, everything should be ready and by hand. And one more helpful tip, don't forget to weigh your flasks. So you can easily calculate mass without taking your products out. Next point is control. When you started the reaction, keep an eye on what's happening. If the reaction is so long that you can't wait for having a launch, ask someone in the lab to take care of it for a while. Don't forget to keep in mind what can go wrong and don't be lazy and tell all possibilities to the colleague. By the way, it is often that the reaction isn't successful because the worker didn't keep track on the time or conditions of the reaction. And finally, write down in your lab notebook every single detail. This habit will help you to find out what step was wrong in the experiment. For example, you heated the flask 5 degrees more than it was supposed to. Mark it. The minor violation may play a key role in failure. By the way, let's talk a bit more about how to keep a lab notebook properly. It is compulsory skill which is taught in the very beginning of a practice course. Working with information is an important proficiency for the future scientist. This is an example of how a lab notebook may look like. By the way, you can check out more details about the lab notebook in our blog. Click the links in the description to this video. The following advice may sound a bit boring, but trust our experience. These tips helped us keep our hair on while writing lab reports and articles. I will just shortly outline the main principles. Firstly, always provide the date, the name or the number of your experiment. 
Secondly, prepare some information before the experiment itself. Write down the reaction, its conditions, required substances and reagents, their properties and make proper calculations. Starting the procedure, make sure you record every step you do and monitor everything that is happening. If you see that the mixture in a bulb becomes red and a sediment appears, write the process down. Thirdly, don't forget about the results. In this section, write down your yields, characterization, spectra and discussion. And of course, end up with a conclusion, with a brief outcome of the experiment. Was it successful? What went wrong? And why? how to fix it? Coming to the results of the experiment. Synthesis usually takes several steps of experiments and often you have to prove that a halfway product is exactly what is needed for further steps. Organic chemists usually use thin layer chromatography or TLC method to monitor the process of reaction. When you acquire a pure substance, it's worth analyzing it via NMR spectroscopy, which in full is nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy or via mass spectrometry or HRMS. Name the analyzed spectra according to the names in your lab notebook and store them in order. Keep all the names and details of the analysis in your lab book too. When you have a lot of data collected, it's worth structuring it. For example, start a report table where you can list the experiments and the brief information about them. So you can navigate easily among dozens of experiments you and your colleagues did. I see you asking, we are living in the technology age. Why not making an electronic notebook with all the experimental data, results, spectra and properties database integrated in a program? I will tell you certainly, why not? There are many ready solutions for electronic lab notebooks. Some of them are free for personal or academic use and quite handy. You can read about them in our blog. Tap the link in the description. Since we started talking about technologies, what about organizing the information which is useful among all the members of the lab? I'm sure you are all familiar with cloud storages like Google Drive, Dropbox, Microsoft OneDrive, Sync. Along with local area storage, they are often neglected and people prefer sharing files in WhatsApp instead. But such cloud storages boost interaction between students and researchers at times more effectively. Thus, in most leading universities and laboratories, shared storage is the main way of keeping and exchanging documents, professional literature, reports and spectra documents between colleagues. By the way, talking about colleagues and friends and other labs, it's quite helpful to have them, since you can ask for advice, share experience, have access to their reagents, glassware or equipment. What's more, you can cooperate for research work. For example, colleagues from physics labs can examine conductivity of your substance, while biologists can help with determination of biological activity. So to work together, you should be friendly, open-minded and kind. Lab is not only about chemicals, but people as well. You can put your finger up if you like this video and write in the comments what helps you to organize your workflow in the lab. If you want to know more about chemistry, find chemistry fellows, work or just have some fun, you are welcome to our chemistry forum. See you soon, bye!